world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. I want to talk about something else. And I want you just to use your imagination. Imagine you've inherited an old house, whether it's from parents or grandparents or just someone who loves you. And so it's, a, it's an amazing house with great heritage and history. And you're going to move in and it's a lovely part of the country. And what a great country to live in. And yes, being an old house, surprise, surprise, it's got a huge cellar underneath of it. And guess what, folks? That cellar is full of delicious English beer. And imagine if there's so much beer, it's equal to 50%, half the value of your mortgage. That's quite a lot of beer, folks. Yes, in fact, it's about 50 years worth of beer. Just imagine that you've got all of that in your cellar. There's just one problem, and that is that some bright spark, they blocked up the door to the cellar with bricks. Now, you've got to work out, do we try and get rid of the bricks and how are we going to do that in order to access this treasure, this valuable English beer under your house, in your cellar? Or do you say, no, I'm going to leave it there like the previous owners did, I'm going to leave that treasure there, and instead I'm going to go and buy some French beer and some Russian beer and maybe some beer from the Middle East. And what would you do? Because the technology to get rid of the bricks, well, it requires a bit of a drill and, OK, it might make a bit of a mess, but maybe there's some new technology, a different type of drill bit that wouldn't make that mess and that you could therefore get rid of that, uh, those bricks and access the treasure in your cellar. You can see where I'm going with this, folks. Because under our feet, we have treasure under the United Kingdom. It's called shale gas. And it's a bit like my analogy with the English beer. Because there's so much down there, it could last us give or take 50 years. The value of that treasure under our feet, it's about half of all the national debt. So you've got on the one hand, you've got the government worrying about whether or not they should increase taxes, making people poorer, whilst they're sending our money overseas to Russia, to France, to the Middle East, when we've got this huge pile of treasure that we could access using new technology. And the value, half our national debt. So the truth is, actually, the state of the government's finances and balance sheet could be very, very strong as long as we make the right decisions. And if we extract that treasure, imagine our gas prices being as they are in the US, about 50% of where they currently are. 50%. Who would benefit the most? The least well off, the poorest in our society. And we wouldn't be exposed to world markets in the same way that if you have to import gas. You see, in the US, because they produce so much gas themselves, their own shale gas, actually, they are dramatically less exposed to world markets. And that is why their gas prices are lower. And that is the opportunity that we could have if we made the right decisions, if we used our own treasure, our own value. Why would you leave that treasure under your feet and send our money to Putin, who's trying to think about invading Ukraine, or being exposed to dodgy electric connectors with Macron, or sending more of our money to the Middle East. Now, I've had some interesting meetings and I've got more coming up. And I believe there are new technologies, interesting technologies, because that's how technology works. It progresses. Great innovators and designers and creators come up with new, improved ways of doing things. And rather like you could have a new drill bit that breaks down the blocks to your cellar. Maybe we could have new technologies, and I believe there are new technologies, that means we can extract shale gas without fracking. But sadly, we've got a government that has no interest whatsoever. Not only have they put a moratorium, they don't even seem interested talking about these new technologies. And I'm going to keep banging on about this because I think it's absolutely critical to the future wealth and prosperity of this country. It would dramatically change the cost of living crisis. 
And don't let any of these green zealots tell you, oh, yeah, but that doesn't comply with the climate agenda. Garbage, nonsense, rubbish. It's the opposite, folks. Because if we use British gas, we save millions and millions of tonnes of CO2 that is created shipping gas from Russia or from the Middle East. Because if you have to ship LNG, liquefied natural, gra national, natural gas, guess what? Yes, you have to liquefy it. That creates CO2. And when it gets here, you have to revaporize it. And that creates CO2. And how do you get it here? In ships burning fuel that, by the way, they don't take account of because it's too embarrassing how much CO2 is created from dirty shipping fuel. So do you see what I mean? We're going to be using gas anyway for the next few decades. So British gas not only is our treasure, not only would it reduce our bills, but folks, it would save CO2. British gas is better for our environment. I'm just going to repeat that because it's so important. Using British gas would be better for the environment than importing gas from elsewhere in the world. So my contention, my passionate view to you, listeners, viewers, anybody out there, we should be unlocking the treasure under our feet. We should be creating new licenses in the North Sea for more gas. It would make us richer. It would help the least well off the most. And I think that is a noble thing to do. It's the smart thing to do because guess what? It will keep our jobs and our money here in the UK. Well, that is my Sunday sermon this week. I think it's absolutely vital. And throughout this year, we need to be going on and on about it because it is so important. Good talk. Hot talk. Hot talk. Talk. Bold talk. talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.